All right, let's take a look at Deep Clone and how it can save work. I've got an opportunity here uh, for my ship provisioning business, and it's got three child records. And these are opportunity products, or sometimes called opportunity line items. Now, whenever I get a new opportunity that comes in, I want to basically build a, a clone that always adds these three products to my opportunity. And that's a great use case for Flow. And traditionally, the way you would do that in Flow is you'd get the opportunity, then you'd get the child records, and if, uh, if I run this, you can see that uh, here are the three child records, the opportunity products, so they're coming in, uh, and I could loop over them, and I could do some assignments, create some variables, and basically clone not just the opportunity, but its child records as well. Um, so what Deep Clone does is it gives you, it sort of replaces all of that with a single action. So let's go take a look. All right, so I still I'm going to start with getting my, my template opportunity. You're gonna, we're going to need a record to start with. That's going to be the record that we clone from. So I'm just going to hard code this to the name of my opportunity. Okay. Now instead, however, of doing all of that querying and looping, I'm just going to grab deep clone. And I'm just going to say clone opportunity and its products. Okay, and because this is a collection action that works with any kind of S objects, I start out by saying, well, for this instance of deep clone, I'm going to pass it an opportunity. Now, the interface is a little messy here we have to provide a way for you to specify everything. So the cloned record is also going to be an opportunity. There's probably a way that I can deduce that, uh, but right now flow is, requires that you say, I'm going to pass the opportunity in the clone that comes out. It's also going to be an opportunity. That's not a surprise. Then there are five slots so that you can deep clone up to five related lists. And we only really want, we only want one, right? We want opportunity line items, opportunity products. So we're sort of done here, except that flow is going, you can see the little required stars. We're kind of required, it's required. So even though we're not going to use these outputs, we have to provide the value. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the same, uh, the same one in, and then I'm going to promptly never pay any attention to the to I to related lists two three four and five again. I just need to do do this to 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 uh, satisfy Flow Builder. Okay, so then what I am going to do here next is I am going to one more time. I'm going to specify that uh, what I'm interested in here are the opportunity product items. Now the name of that relationship is what's needed here. So what is that lookup? What does that lookup look like? Well, let's go take a look. So here's opportunity product. And it's got a lookup via opportunity ID to opportunity. So far, so good. But what we really need is the name of the child relationship. And that's right here. Opportunity line items. So I am going to basically say that the child relationships I want to clone are the opportunity line items. You can pass this in, you can, you can specify more than one of these with a comma, or alternatively, you could pass them in as a list of strings. Now here, we are going to basically just 
grab the output of our get records using automatic output handling. And because we're, we're using a record, we don't need to use an ID. So in both of these cases, you use one or the other. It's just giving you some flexibility. I'm going to turn on Save Child Records automatically and Save Immediately. Uh, and Save Immediately is generally, uh, you got to have this set to true if you're going to create child records. And the reason is that creating child records, you got to have a parent ID. And until you save immediately, until you save the, the clone of the parent record, it's not going to have an ID. Okay, so we've got this and uh, we're going to leave this unhooked up for the moment. We're just going to uh, clone we're going to clone the opportunity and, and let's go back and take one last look. So we've got the opportunity HMS victory and it's got three products, Grog, Sailcloth and Spars. All right, so let's run this. Okay, so deep clone has run and you can see that we have a cloned opportunity and a cloned related list. So let's go take a look. And let's refresh. And there's the cloned opportunity. So we've it, the action tacks on a date stamp and the word clone, so you can keep it keep them apart. Uh, but if we go and we take a look, so you can see that uh, this cloned opportunity, it's got a grog product, and that's grog product is uh, let's see three i e g six. Uh, as compared to the grog product on the original one, which you can see is 3IE5G. So these are distinct opportunity products, opportunity line items. They have been cloned effectively. Good. So far, so good. Let's do something a little fancier. Let's say that we want to modify all of the cloned child records as part of this process. And that's that's pretty common. You often want to customize or, or update uh, something about the child records as you're doing it. So I'm going to do that here uh, with a map collections action. Map collection, one of the collection processors, you know, great for making changes to every item in a collection. Uh, this one is set to just take each of the auto opportunity products in, make a change, and spit it back out. Now, what is the change we're going to make? Well, what Map Collection does is it lets you specify all the fields you want to change uh, and then what change you want to apply. So what I'm going to change is service date. If we go back to we'll look at one of these opportunity products, the service date is right here. So we've cloned this record, but let's say that we don't want this date to be blank. We don't want it to be whatever the parent record uh, the parent uh, version of it was. We want it to be today's date. So what you see what I've done here is I've used a merge field to pull in a formula uh, and that's very powerful. It's something I actually didn't realize for a long time that when you are passing strings into actions you can just insert merge fields like this and as long as you get the syntax right with the braces and the exclamation point it will do the substitution. What is formula today? Well, pretty straightforward. It's just the function today. Uh, so that's all this is. But of course, this could be a richer formula. And that's nice because that lets you uh, use something like map collection, but apply very dynamic information uh, to all of these fields. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to update so we're going to update all of those opportunity products. Now, it's not going to, map collection doesn't have any sort of automatic save. So we're going to add an update records here. Uh, and we're going to get to just take the output from map collection. And that's right here. I'm using automatic output handling. So I am referencing the name of uh, the element that's producing the output that I want. So update modified opportunity products. All right, and 
that should be all I need to do. So let's go here just to clean things up a little. Let's delete the clone that we just created. All right. Let's get rid of these guys. We're saved. So let's run this. So we got an error. Why did we get an error? Well, you can see that the error is about total price. So we're having a problem. Um, it's something about price. We're gonna take some lemons here and we're gonna make some lemonade. And what we're gonna do is demonstrate how these abilities to manipulate data can help you solve problems like this. It turns out that the issue here is that we cloned records that had a formula field called total price and now when we're what we're trying to do is we're trying to save those and the total price and is just causing problems because we're trying to save a value into a formula field so that's kind of a mess uh, but what we can do here is uh, let's change up how we're going to attack this. Instead of trying to save it automatically, let's go back here and let's say that we're not going to save the child records automatically because we need to do a little surgery on them. It turns out that these opportunity products are a bit fussy. Uh, now we have just the thing for that. Let's go back to our map collection. In, ad in addition to changing the service date, let's blank out the total price so even though we're cloning it we don't want to bring along the total price value from the parent we want to blank blank that out to let the formula field calculate it now at this point we're going to have our clone child records are going to be in good shape and they're going to be ready to save, but they haven't been saved yet. So instead of an update, we're going to do a create. So let's say create cloned opportunity products. And we're going to still, we're going to select the same output from the map collection. And let's hook that up. All right. So. Uh, let's run this. Okay, so this time no error, and you can see here that in our create, we were creating three different opportunity products. Let's go take a look. Okay, we'll take the latest clone. You can see that uh, it's useful to have this time stamp here. So let's take a look at this latest clone. And now we can look at the opportunity products and you can see that they have effectively provided, uh, they've effectively been saved and they've used today's date um, and everything is looking pretty good. So deep clone, powerful tool for automating cloning operations. Uh, and keep in mind how you can use collection actions like map collection to tune uh, your cloned data either right after you've saved it as an update or before you've saved it as a create. Uh, so good luck with this. Uh, we think that uh, this will uh, be a real boon to a lot of flow use cases that have typically involved a lot of looping and assignments. Uh, and uh, enjoy.